Hi everyone, it's Jan, and I don't know what the weather is like where you are, but it has either been cold and snowy or wet and rainy everywhere that I've been, so I'm ready to create a little sunshine, and I decided to use this Stamping Bella stamp of Lolly and her Brawly. Super cute. Love this stamp, and it really is a great little image to do this focal image, making the focal image shine with. And so I'm going to start by stamping Little Miss Lolly with some Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I have die cut a um, piece of Copic Quality cardstock, and that helps me just kind of go ahead and get my placement where I want things. And I'm going to start by coloring um, her face and um, all of the flesh. I just like going that way. This is one of my favorite color combos with E000, E00, and E21. I know that there's lots of other um, skin tone combinations out there, and I use them, but this is one of those that when I don't have a lot of surface area to work with and to blend with, this is a good one um, to go with. So I'm not going to do a super amount of blending on her face. I am going to put some R20 in for her little blushing cheeks. And I actually am going to add in, I believe, a little R32. I just felt like she needed a little bit um, deeper color in her, in her cheeks. So sometimes I'll add that R32 in. Um, this is one of the, I just love this stamp. Um, all of the Stamping Bella. The girls are whimsical and fun. They're great for making cards for a girlfriend or a niece or a nephew or daughter. They're just, they're cute and sassy and very easy and quick to color. Um, and I had a little bit of a color outside the line boo-boo, so I just took my um, Zero Blender and just unched it back in. Don't you love that? You can just unch your mistakes. I wish I could do that in the rest of my life. I am always looking for a way to unch the things I did wrong. So, again, I'm not doing a super lot of coloring, but because I figured that ruffle was going to be a little transparent, I went ahead and put a little flesh tone underneath that. This is a color combination that I like to use on kind of a auburn brunette, maybe a brunette that has a little bit of red undertone. So I use Y32, E13, E59, and E18. And it's really that E13 and E18 that do that. Even if you're not wanting a, um, if you want more of a redhead, I think E59 is a good dark color for you to use on that. You can see I'm not doing a lot of blending. I'm just kind of leaving the strokes in there, gave it a little bit of a highlight. Now, here's why I think this is a great image if you are just kind of starting um, with um, coloring with your Copics or, or other alcohol markers, because there's just some great little areas for you to practice your blending and shading. And I wanted this um, parasol or umbrella to really have a very dimensional look. And the way that you do that is in the the places where it would be recessed, make sure you just get lots of dark in there. And I do that just by adding a little color at the time. And I work on a section at the time. I don't try and do the whole umbrella. I kind of focus on what is the shape of the section that I'm coloring. And you know, I'll I'll come back, like here now that I've got the whole thing, I will go back and kind of perfect some things, but I found by working on those areas one section at a time, I end up with that more dimensional look. You can see that the where the umbrella kind of puffs out, I've I've left it a lot lighter. I'm gonna do the same thing on her coat. I am going to work on it a section at a time. When I first started coloring, I tended to lay color down everywhere and then was always kind of feeling like I was working to correct what I did with that first little bit of color. And so now what I, I tend to do is I color a section at the time, keeping a wet edge, 
and I usually start with my darker colors and lay the, the least amount of it down because I can always go back and add a little more. I find that I just my tendency in coloring is not to add enough darks. I tend to keep blending everything until it just all kind of becomes a single color. And so by working on this um, an image, a, just an area or a shape at a time, and putting a little dark um, down, not a lot, um, and then continuing to go back and work in some more dark, I find that I'm much happier with my my the results of my coloring I don't I am not Copic certified but I those are just some things that I've learned from doing a little practice um, this color combination I just love it it is a great one it's BG10 BG02 BG05 and BG09 um, obviously I'm not using a lot of that BG09 but I think it really does just make the image pop. You can see when I go back and add that touch of, of that dark in there, it just makes you really kind of believe that her little rain jacket is dimensional. So I've moved on to the other side and I'm going back and adding just a little bit of, of dark in there to give some shadow to where her arm is coming in front of her body. Isn't she just cute? She would, I think she would be really cute paper pieced too. But my favorite thing about this image are her rain boots. And so I got out my favorite yellow combination and just went to town. And you'll see I'm even doing her boots kind of that same way. I'm doing the, the toe section first. I'm using Y13, Y15, Y18, and Y19. Very um, great color combination to get a lot of um, depth of your coloring. If you only have a couple of colors, you can blend a couple of those together. Um, I just, this is just a happy color combination, so I kind of like um, using all of them. And you can see, again, I just did kind of my little section coloring. I wanted to make them look really wet and dimensional and I, I, they weren't an afterthought. I just wanted them to kind of be a focal image so making a, a bright color uh, really kind of helped. So there we go and I'm working on a little sunflower and I use those same um, yellows up there and then this um, brown combination is one that I love when working with sunflowers and and those kinds of things. It's E41, E43, E44, and E49. It's just a very nice neutral. Um, your eye looks at it. I use it for wood quite a bit and and those kinds of things. It's it's one of those color combinations that you see and your eye thinks that it's a natural um, in nature kind of thing. So I use it for wood and and straw and you know flower centers that sort of thing. Just a good little detail when I was all done I went in with the, the my darkest color there and just added a few dots for the sunflower seeds. Now I didn't have I was looking trying to create a tele, terracotta pot here and I didn't really have a great um, range of colors. So I pulled out E97 and E99 and even though their numbers are really close together they're kind of they they don't blend really well together so you can see I'm using a technique to kind of force blend them which is where I take the lighter marker and I touch the tip of it to the darker one and that gives us almost a third color to blend in and it kind of forces them to blend a little bit together. So when I feel like I'm just not getting it to do what I, I want it to do, I will always try that technique. It doesn't hurt your markers. You can, can kind of scribble them off um, somewhere else if it looks like it's contaminated, but really and truly, just for that little bit, it's a great solution. I'm going to use some kind of bright greens because I wanted this to look very spring-like, and so I've pulled out one of my favorite grass spring 
grass um, and leaves combination, which is YG13, YG25, YG17, and YG67. Clearly, colors from all over, but I, um, when I'm working on a new color combination, I just take a scratch piece of paper out and I try greens next to each other. I knew I wasn't really trying to blend this. I wanted there to be that contrast between, you know how new grass and new blades um, are a little bit brighter and shinier, and the, sometimes even the color combinations that we choose can help the viewer kind of sense um, what's, what season it is, what the mood is. Um, so don't be afraid to pick some colors that really aren't even next to each other on um, your color sheet. Just try them out and see if they work well together. Now to do the background, I took the time to go ahead and create a little mask. Um, she's so delicate that I really wanted to not, when I created this background, I did not want to be coloring over her. I wanted her to be really crisp and clean. And I'm going to use some of my light yellows like Y06, Y02, Y13. And I'm just going to kind of add a little bit of a sunny glow behind her. Like she's gone, it was raining, she went out, and the sunshine kind of came out. You know how you just, things just kind of have a glow about them right after the, the rain has cleared? That's really what I'm going for. I'm not co coloring it in a solid way, um, but I'm just kind of putting some little streaks um, in that background and um, using that lightest color, which is Y000, I think, just to kind of blend it out a little bit. Now, the trick to doing this is that I'm using my Copics for um, the background and I um, for, for the sunshine, but I'm going to go in and do the sky with some Distress Ink. And that way, those two colors don't mix. If you put yellow and blue together, you get green, right? So one way to avoid that is to use two different mediums when um, you are doing that. So that yellow stays yellow behind her, but I can bring in some blue for the sky and it stays really true blue. And of course I have to actually make the raindrops um, shine and sparkle and be wet. And so I'm using this glass effects gel from Viva Decor. You could use glossy accents or something like that, but I will tell you, you know, I always tell you when you can use anything you want. And the reason that I'm actually using this glass effects is that it holds the shape of a raindrop. It is dimensional and our, um, our um, crystal effects or glossy accents, they are self-leveling. And so they kind of don't hold that dimension. Now I'm adding just a few little raindrops in, a, in the same color of blue as I did the sky. Gives it a nice subtle effect. You notice I put the, the mask back on. And then I'm going to go back in with my crystal effects and um, make those raindrops kind of sparkle and shine too. You, I, you, no reason that you have to do that extra little, little um, stamping, but I just wanted it, her to be in a bit of a rainstorm, and I had that stamp, so I went ahead and added this in. Aren't those just the cutest little boots? And that snail over there is so fun. The background is just an embossed piece of card that I sprayed with some Delusion Spray during one of my creative playtimes, and I grabbed it as the background for this. I just keep my backgrounds. I hope wherever you are that you will have some time to go into your studio and, and re, um, recharge your mind, change the... the situation around you, the, the season without around you. If you need a little sunshine, go in and create you a sunshiny card. I appreciate you hanging out with me. Um, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe so you can always find out what I'm up to. And be sure and follow me on Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Appreciate you all. Hope you're having a great week and be sure and save some time for creative play.